Is CM Punk versus Stone Cold Steve Austin back on? Plus, we have an update on Scott Demore's TNA departure and a legendary gimmick match is on AEW Dynamite tonight. It is all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. We go back, oh, over 10 years, and we had some spicy intrigue for a dream match between CM Punk and Stone Cold Steve Austin. It was around the release of one of the WWE video games yes. that they started building this. The sit-down interview yeah. promotional thing where it turns out they both went, you know what, we're not just going to help promote this video game. We're going to plant some seeds for what could be one of the biggest feuds of all time. And Those that, seeds never came to fruition. No, so. they didn't. They, the seeds, they looked like they were overgrown for a bit and then someone chopped them down and now no one is in the empty garden, Johnny. <laughs> and uh, however, those seeds have been reinvigorated mm. with some new compost. I don't know. I don't know any more gardening things. Steve Austin was on ESPN promoting 2K24 and he was asked about getting back into the ring. He said, I said, I never get in the ring again unless all the stars aligned. And for some reason, somehow they all did. And at the age of 57, I headlined the first night of WrestleMania. I never thought I'd do that. If you'd have told me that when I was retired in 2003, I'd have said, you're crazy. So I'm not going to sit here and say no to anything because you never say never in this crazy business of sports entertainment. He went yes. on to drop some hints as to who that potential start aligning moment could be with. Yes, ESPN asked Austin when he said this, uh, who would be a potential dream opponent if you were to get in the ring again? And he didn't reveal it out and out, but then they broached the subject to Austin of possibly CM Punk. And to that idea, he replied, that would be a good one. I like Punk and I think Punk likes me so long as he can take a stunner. <laughs> um, I consider him a great friend, a great guy and a great wrestler who's had a good career. A uh, great career, sorry, I should say. Uh, we'll see, he said. We'll so, see. What a worker brother always keeping the seeds mm. in the soil it, it's a it's a it's a potential dream match that we've all thought of for yeah as you say over a decade now um because I, it, it writes itself straight edge beer drinking perks and all that sort of stuff but um i wonder if back in the day when they did that sit down interview in, in 2014 or around 2014 i can't remember exactly were they, do you think they were just riffing and it got out of hand? It feels like they might have just had fun it, with it. It feels like they might have had a bit of fun with it. it I, I think for as long as I can remember, WWE have always been trying to convince Steve Austin to come back and have another match. Yeah. And there's been a few times where they've uh, in, tried to encourage it and cajole, and cajole him out with the right creative. Remember when Hulk Hogan called him out? Yeah. And then no one, we all forgot about it until this moment. <laughs> wasn't that Hogan kind of trying to take the reins himself? And they went, no. Ah, uh, was or, it inaudible by Hogan? I, I'm, I mean, I'm only assuming, but given what, given the history of Hulk Hogan, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too surprised to find out that it was him trying to politic a little bit. Very true. But WWE have always been keen to get Steve Austin back uh, on a more regular basis, and I think this is probably with with everything that's gone on in the wrestling world lately, and I think with Steve Austin maybe looking at what guys like The Rock are doing, he's thinking. Thinking, well, maybe there's an opportunity mm. here if I'm feeling well enough. And with CM Punk in there, like I always like working with Punk, mm. maybe we can finally do it. Maybe they could. Ooh. If they did it, I'd be looking forward to the, the build up promos almost more than the match itself. It'd be all promos yeah. and then a, maybe a good 18 minute. Whoa! Walk to the ring. Ah. Then a three minute match. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Although he, Austin surprised everybody in that match he was talking about with Kevin Owens. It seemed like he was a little bit slow and stiff at, at the start. And then everyone pointed out it was when he took that vertical suplex on the floor and it woke him up and suddenly he was firing off right hands like the old Austin and everything. Obviously, he's even older now than he was then, but... Probably yeah. an element of like, I wouldn't know because I've never had that sort of neck surgery, but probably when you take a move like that and you go, Oh, I'm all right. Mm. Like the, the, there's the there's the fear that comes with taking a bump as to whether or not you'll be all right on the other side of it. Yeah. So I guess maybe taking a bump like that was what made him go. Oh, I'm fine. Ah, I'll get in. Maybe. Then yeah. the adrenaline goes and, it, and you lose yourself in the music. The moment you <laughs> yes. own it, you better never let it go. That's probably what happened. I could see it happening with Punk. I could possibly see it as well. And obviously, oh. Punk's all about making moments. He loves that sort of thing, especially later in his career. Uh, Austin. I think you're right, he might do it, he might do it. Obviously he wasn't the same Austin that we saw against Owens as we did against Brett or whatever all those years ago, but his style lends itself well to kind of smoke and mirrors and allowing for him to get away with not doing as much as he used to. Because yeah. he's, he's a brawly boy, he's a brawler. He's always been a brawly boy. Well, uh, no, I mean, 
It was the ringmaster first time. Come on. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm having a terrible morning with my wrestling no, lexicon. No, 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 you are, no, you are no. correct for calling me out. No, he wasn't always a brawly boy. I don't feel like I led you into agreeing with me and then went, actually, you're wrong. <laughs> he wasn't always a brawly boy. He had the technique instead. <laughs> Whatever you say or don't say, yeah. can I take your coat as normal or for the first time? I'm now worried that I said that he was the taskmaster, not the ringmaster, but we'll see. We'll go he back to review the footage. Jack. Yeah, God. I know that. God. Uh... God. Uh, let's go over to TNA, uh, where we oh. lost Scott Demore from mm. the company last week. His, uh, his TNA presidency was terminated by Anthem. Five for Select say, although the news was a shock to many, including the roster, the wheels were in motion for Demore's termination a month prior. Demore adamantly did not want to leave TNA. Although Anthem had stated they wished to present it as a mutual departure. There was correspondence between the two sides uh, in aid in the transition of the new president, Anthony Cicione, uh, in the role. Uh, we are told that Demore spoke very highly of the new TNA uh, president, but were reiter reiterated that he didn't want to leave. And this is where he put in a bid to buy TNA. So like, he did that after the plans to remove him were in motion. That's what it, that's what Fightful is suggesting right. that it was it was almost like a last ditch attempt to stay in his post to go I've got some backing to buy the company mm -hmm. like Scott Demore's passion for TNA oh yeah without question if you watch any of the build up to the rebranding of TNA and and uh, I can speak for it as well like incredibly Good passionate point. about the product itself and um, there's a lot of conversation about money within TNA and an increase in budget was brought up, uh, but sources say that that increase in budget will really be for software upgrades rather than money for talent. Okay. If you see what I mean? I think a lot of people thought, oh, there's, there's going to get more money for TNA. What they really mean is they want to update sort of the back end of things rather than paying for more wrestlers. Yeah. It's kind of what it looks it's, like. It seems like the sense that kind of we get from all of these stories that have come out about Scott Demore being released from TNA is that his ambition for the promotion seemed to exceed that of the promotion itself and they weren't willing to kind of invest in him but if you look at what Scott Demore did and the support he generated amongst fans and his own locker room as well as we'll talk about in a second given their response to his firing mm. um, you can tell that he was definitely someone who had the promotion's best interest at heart so I'm I mean, like many people, I'm quite disappointed by the news. I think it's a shame because when you see someone who's genuinely passionate about what they're doing and genuinely seems to be doing well as well, it's just a shame to see them let go like that. It seems quite soulless and corporate, doesn't it? Very much so. Yeah. Five will select say that talent we have heard from were overwhelmed and unhappy about the move away from Demore, as many were loyal to him. The schedule for TNA looks to be the same this year, but word is they want to reduce some of the cost compared to 2020. Okay. In terms of what that means for some of the bigger shows and in terms of what that means for maybe international tours, we don't quite know at this point. Mm. But it's one that we'll definitely keep an eye on. Uh, there was one ex-WWE name that said he was uh, he had conversations with TNA, though. Yes, speaking on a recent edition of Sunday Night's Main Event podcast, Matt Riddle revealed that he had conversations with TNA. He said, when I got done with WWE, it's kind of stressful working on TV all the time, especially with all the travel. The money is awesome. It's definitely worth it and the experience but now I want to take a break from TV. After the 90 days and during the 90 days of his no compete clause, presumably, um, I'm setting some dates up. I talked to some places. I talked to TNA. I've worked with New Japan and MLW. I'm choosing places more pay-per-view based where I don't have to worry about going to commercial where we can get that Fritos advertisement. <laughs> um, so yeah, it seems like he wants to pick and choose his shows more wrestling, bigger, more seldom matches, I suppose. He is set to compete in New Japan very, very soon again as well. Um, and I think TNA MLW seem to like him as well yeah and tna i'm trying to work out where he could fit in but i mean he lots of people i'm sure would be keen to have sort of a hard-hitting style shoot style match with matt riddle speaking of hard hitting tonight on dynamite valentine's day dynamite oh. nothing says love quite like a random bit of tony khan booking yes this is a curious one because tony khan announced on social media last night that orange cassidy threw out an open challenge to any member of the undisputed kingdom to a Texas death match. Mm. Can't even get the words out, I'm so shocked. <laughs> <coughs> Texas Deathmatch. Well, Aiden Gibbons checked upstairs and this show is indeed taking place in Texas. But the problem that everyone's encountered here is the last Texas death match in AW, I think, was that amazing one, the horrible, gruesome, amazing, brilliant, brutal one between Hangman Page and Swerve Strickland. 
You can't just slap that stipulation about Willington Nillington now, Tom. It you? doesn't seem like you can. Now, there is obviously an ongoing thing between the best friends and the undisputed kingdom. Mm -hmm. So there is a bit of storyline legitimacy there, but it just seems random to throw an open challenge to a Texas death match. I get the geographical connection. Yeah. La, 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 la. Uh, but by the way, the challenge was accepted by Matt Taven. So we're getting Orange Cassidy mm -hmm. versus Matt Taven in a Texas death match. And with no disrespect to either of those competitors, this doesn't need to be a Texas death match. Imagine if they'd prove us totally wrong, though, and they just have such a brutal match. You know what? If they do, <laughs> absolutely outstanding. Go for it. But like you say, the bar is so high yeah. for that particular gimmick match. Mm. It's, you know, legendary status before it even, before Swerve and Hangman even got their hands on it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, an open challenge to a death match announced not in like a week of build-up, but announced by a, to by a <laughs> chosen by Orange Cassidy and announced via Tony Khan. Yeah. Uh, to the world. It's a strange choice. It is a strange one. Uh, this is all the, also obviously appears to be building towards Orange Cassidy versus Roderick Strong at Revolution for the International Championship. It's all part of that build mm. as well. If they had a Texas yeah, Death match, it's not to even build. their own feud. It's to feed into another one. Uh, it's to feed into a regular singles match. <laughs> yeah. Not trying to be Debbie Downer, <laughs> but you, do you see where, do you appreciate it's where we're coming from? One. It's a strange Do you one. appreciate where we're coming from on it? Uh, last year, you did some really wonderful charity work. Oh, thank you. Uh, and it's partly an inspiration for me to do something myself oh. this year. Uh, I feel terrified announcing this. I, I would turn 40 this year and that scared me, but it turns out 40 is fine. So I'm gonna do other things that scare me this year. Uh, so I've signed up for the Great North Run. Oh. Uh, which takes place in September uh, in Newcastle. The, iconic, the iconic Great North The Run. greatest half marathon in the universe. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm very excited for you. I'm running it for Calm, the campaign against living miserably. Uh, it's a great excuse to get some timber off ahead of my marriage. And Lord knows at 40, I should probably look after my health a bit better. So maybe doing cardio a couple of times a week in, in lieu of getting ready for a half marathon is probably the way to do it. When does it come? September? September. I can't remember the exact date. Uh, oh, but I've got seven got months to get ready for yeah. it, so it should be fine. Uh, if on my Twitter, at Tom Campbell, there's a pinned tweet. Honestly, times are hard. You don't feel like you need to... Uh, donate if you can but I'm raising money for Calm they're a really great charity that support mental health and uh, if you can great if you want to just share it and just you know give me a go on kid uh, give us some support that'd be great as well mm. I feel genuinely terrified no. now I've said it on here yeah now it's public yeah, yeah. now we're going here you've we got, go you've got time to prepare though and everything come on Tom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and also what people tend to I've never done it obviously but what people tend to say is when they do it it's a wonderful experience as well apparently it's great my my good lady did it in 2018 I was just bursting with pride mm. for her doing it and I kind of want to try and do it and it's somewhere near the way, the grace in which she did it. Right, okay. <laughs> somewhere fair near would fair be enough. plenty for me. Uh, but yeah, putting that here, accountability, doing it now, off we go. Fantastic. More importantly, you're on Twitch tonight. Well, less important. But More okay. importantly, um, your journey on Twitch tonight, in case you missed the plug earlier I, today. I am on twitch.tv forward slash callaholic. Uh, Owen can't stream this week, but I'm riding solo like Jason Zarulo, uh, <laughs> taking charge of the Niigata Swans in Japan. We've moved from South Shields FC over to Japan, and that's on twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic at 6 p.m. GMT tonight. And for the latest wrestling news throughout the day, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye. <laughs>